Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm back today with another video for you. It's a bit of a different one um, than I usually have done before on my channel, um, but it's something that's quite important to me and I thought doing a video would be quite a good way to raise some awareness. Um, so basically May is EDS Awareness Month. Um, EDS stands for something called Ellis Danlos Syndrome, um, which is one of the conditions that I have. Um, and EDS UK, which is like the UK charity for people with EDS, are doing this kind of campaign called Making the Invisible Visible. Um, so I thought I would try and make some sort of video around that kind of theme um, because EDS can be quite an invisible illness. Um, I've kind of tried to think of some ways to make it more visible for you. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what the theme of this video is about. Um, I've tried to give it some sort of order but it's kind of a bit random. All these thoughts are kind of going around in my head of how I could do it um, and yeah so you kind of have to bear with me. Um, so I don't want this to be a video that is kind of one of those you know like oh woe is me I've got so many things wrong with me feel sorry for me that kind of thing that this is not a video like that this is a video to raise awareness of EDS. Um, just to kind of help people to understand a bit more about what it is. Um, you know, if there's people watching this that have been having random symptoms and they can't seem to get any answers, then I'm hoping this might be able to help them. But also just to kind of raise a bit of, an aw of awareness so that, you know, people don't judge other people by how they look because there can be a lot of stuff going on underneath, you know, for any invisible illness, mental health, physical health, that you just can't see. Um, so I'm kind of hoping to raise a bit of awareness about that. I've actually got a lot of like notes written down here to kind of help guide me through this, um, just so that I don't miss stuff out. Um, so yeah, I kind of, I'll start a bit about what EDS is. I said, so obviously let you know that it's, um, it's short for Ellis Danlos Syndrome. There are a lot of different types of EDS. I have type three, which is the hypermobility type. Often when I tell people that, you get comments like oh you're a bit bendy or you're double jointed or something like that that isn't eds yes hypermobility which is kind of like bendy joints is or can be part of having ellis danlos syndrome but there's a heck of a lot more to it than that um i don't want to kind of get too deep with it all and i will have sort of add links down below so that you can go and read about it more if you'd like to um but basically um Ellis Danlos syndrome is a problem with the body's collagen. Um, collagen is something that holds most of your body together, your joints, um, your insides, your intestines, all sorts of things. So there's a sort of genetic fault with that collagen. Um, and because so much of your body is made up of collagen or held together by collagen, it can affect pretty much anything, um, you know, digestive system, um, neurological system, circulatory system, eyesight, skin, joints, muscles, everything basically. Um, I was kind of given the example that in a healthy person the collagen is like super glue so it sticks things together and holds them as they should be. Whereas with someone in EDS, your collagen is more like chewing gum. So although it does stick things together, it's very loose and can kind of come apart and just doesn't do its job properly. So that's that's kind of what is understood to be the main problem with EDS. There's still a heck of a lot of research going on um, and there's still a lot to understand about Ellis Danlos in general. Um, but especially the hypermobility type because there isn't a genetic test at the moment for that particular type of EDS. Okay, so I will just start going through some of the things that I feel make EDS a bit more visible to those people that don't have it or perhaps not even make it that visible but just some of the things that perhaps you could be aware of that are part of having EDS. So the first thing I want to start with is something called the Baton score. Um, when you are diagnosed with Ellis Danlos syndrome, one of the tests that the doctors will do for you is something called the Baton score. Um, it's basically a sign of hypermobility, so they look at different um, different joints um, and see how hypermobile they are, and then you get a score. Um, and depending on your score, it kind of depends on how. Uh, severe your hypermobility is. 
people can be hypermobile and not have EDS. I kind of just want to clear that one up because you know a lot of people have hypermobile joints a lot of people can do party tricks and stuff like that it doesn't mean they have EDS. EDS is as I said a lot more than having hypermobile joints. Um, so the Baton score I'm going to put a picture up for you so that you can see um, exactly what the different steps are of the Baton score um, but I'll just kind of go over a couple of the things so things like being able to bend your thumb down to your arm like that um, you get one for each side that you can do it on um, things like being able to touch the floor with flat hands um, without bending your knees um, overextension of joints like your knees and arms so like with my knees they kind of bend the wrong way <laughs> um, but yeah in the picture you'll be able to see a lot more and as I said I will include links so that you can see um, read a lot more about EDS and get more information if that's the kind of thing you need to but just like simple things like that can be a sign of someone that's got EDS but it's not necessarily something that you're going to see every day because generally I've been taught anyway that I shouldn't be doing a lot of these kind of party tricks because it's actually not very good for your your body when you've got EDS because you're just hyperextending too much and you can damage the joints and the muscles and things like that around it. Okay so the next thing that um, I was going to talk to you about is doctors um, or kind of more generally kind of hospital appointments, doctor's appointments, um, medical appointments, all this kind of stuff. Um, a lot of this stuff you probably will never see because generally you know people don't post on social media when they're going to see a doctor or having a hospital appointment or something like that but because EDS affects so many different parts of the body um, patients with EDS or people with EDS sorry um, will often end up seeing a lot of doctors a lot of different specialists um, because there's not kind of one person that deals with everything so you're having to see lots of different specialists to deal with all the different problems that EDS um, kind of affects so I'm going to try and like list the specialists that I'm under just to kind of give you an overview of a typical, well not necessarily typical, everyone's different, but the doctors that I see. So obviously I see my GP, um, I am under a gastroenterologist who deals with um, the like intestines and um, food and eating and that kind of thing. Um, I also see a dietitian for kind of the same kind of reason. Um, I see a cardiologist who specialises in POTS which is um, a condition that kind of can often go hand in hand with EDS. I'm not going to go into all of that now because it's too complicated but if you would like me to talk about it more I'm more than happy to. Um, I see a urologist because I have problems with my bladder and kidneys. Um, I see a neurologist um, because I had a seizure last year um, and I suffer with quite bad headaches and things like that. I also see my optician quite a lot because I have a lot of problems with my sight. Um, I see a rheumatologist who deals with kind of, I suppose like EDS more as a whole, um, they do like joints and things like that. Um, I see, I also see another specialist gastroenterologist up in London because a lot of the problems with EDS are very specialised and you need a, a, someone that's kind of interested in that kind of thing. Um, I see a physiotherapist for um, sort of rehabilitation and things like that. Um, who else do I see? There's got to be some more but <laughs> that kind of gives you an idea of some of the specialists that you end up seeing and Sometimes it does feel like being ill is a full-time job, kind of having to go to all these different appointments, um, keep track of like referrals and tests and, and things like that. And I do find it quite difficult sometimes. I'm very lucky that I've got my parents to help me. Um, and I am very lucky that I've actually got these the access to these specialists um, who you know, are interested in wanting to help me and wanting to manage my symptoms there is no cure for EDS so it is about symptom management um, and you know for a long time it took me like 25 years to get my diagnosis I'm 27 now so I've only been diagnosed for like two years um, and for a long long time you know I was kind of seeing people and being told there was nothing wrong with me and it was incredibly frustrating so to be in a place now where I have a diagnosis and I have doctors who have some understanding, some more than others, of EDS and the problems that it causes, you know, I do feel incredibly lucky and, 
grateful that I've got those people to help me but it does get tiring sometimes and you know I only have a limited amount of energy I'm trying to do university so between doing uni and all my medical appointments there isn't a lot of time for anything else um, but that's that's just how it is so you know you just got to get on with it okay so as well as seeing um, a lot of doctors and specialists um, people with EDS usually end up having quite a lot of tests procedures operations depending on symptoms and you know what how far along you are with your diagnosis and things like that um, I have lost count of the amount of tests and things like that I've had over the years um, you know just to kind of give you an idea of some of the things that you know that they test for and stuff like that um, I've had a lot of blood tests can't remember how many um, a lot of like urine samples um, I've had a colonoscopy and gastroscopy which is where they put um, a camera down your throat and the other way to look inside you. Um, I've had my appendix out, my gallbladder out. Um, I had an operation last month um, to look at like my bladder and see what was going on in there. Um, oh, all sorts of things like a lot of digestive tests, a lot of scans, x-rays, MRIs. CT scans, um, I've had um, an EEG which looks for like seizure activity, um, ultrasounds, yeah I I can't remember and you know <laughs> to begin with maybe you start counting and, and over the years you just kind of lose track but again you know I do feel lucky in some ways to be able to have these scans and these tests to try and find you know what is going on and try and find ways to help me because I know there's a lot of people who don't get that access to that kind of thing but again it is very tiring and you know I try to keep as positive as possible but sometimes it does seem very repetitive and ongoing and and exhausting when you just want to try and live a normal life but yeah that's how it is so again you know you're not going to necessarily see all this stuff because it's stuff that goes on behind closed doors but for people with EDS that kind of stuff is not invisible it's it, it's happening and you know it is a big part of being unwell unfortunately. So usually with EDS people end up taking quite a lot of medications um, and supplements and things like that um, because I said before that there isn't a cure and it is about symptom management you know there is a lot of having to take pills to, to help certain symptoms and have treatments for certain things. Um, you know, like this morning, I'm filming this after breakfast and I think I must have taken maybe 10 tablets this morning, like one powder medication, two chewable ones, two inhalers. Um, for lunch, I have a Fortisip, which is like a liquid, um, liquid nutrition because I... Although I can eat, I find it very difficult and very painful and things like that. So I kind of supplement with those kind of things just to keep my calories up and stuff like that. Um, I've, I find with medications, my body's quite sensitive to them. So it's quite difficult trying to find medications that agree with my body and that help the problem that, you know, that I'm having problems with. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, I spend quite a lot of time on a Sunday sorting out all my medications for the next week so that they're all in one place. I keep them all in a little box um, so that I know exactly what I've got to take and when I've got to take it. Um, and this can be quite a visible part of it, I suppose. If I go out with friends um, and I'm out sort of over a time when I have to take my tablets, you know, I'll get my box out and I'll take my tablets or I'll use my inhaler or I'll drink my Fortisip or whatever and... I mean, the people that know me don't ask questions anymore because they know, they know everything. You know, they know why I'm taking my tablets and things like that. But sometimes, I do feel a bit self-conscious. You know, if you're in a restaurant or something and you get your tablet box out and then you sit there taking like however many tablets, occasionally you do get the strange looks from people like, you know, wondering why on earth you're sitting there taking all these drugs. Um, so yeah, it's not necessarily particularly invisible that part. So I mentioned before um, that I see a physiotherapist and physiotherapy um, is quite an important part um, of sort of treatment for people with EDS but it's really important to find the right physio exercises and the right physio that understands EDS. I've seen a lot of physios before who, well before I had the EDS diagnosis and afterwards who haven't understood it 
and have really tried to push me to do exercises that are too strenuous or that bend me in the wrong direction or you know stretch bits that shouldn't be stretched and stuff like that the, the physio that I see at the moment is fantastic he really understands what EDS is and what I need um, and what I really need is very gentle exercises to strengthen the core muscles because the more you can strengthen the muscles around joints and things like that the idea is that hopefully the less injuries and things like that you'll get um, unfortunately it's not a sort of finite process you know you don't go to physio for six weeks and then everything's better it's one of those things that you are going to have to do for the rest of your life and I do find that quite difficult sometimes because you don't see results like you may with like you know a specific injury um but I don't know I just I keep trying to do it it's very difficult to know whether it's helping or not because your body just does strange things and you never know whether it would be better or worse without it but I am really trying this time to just keep doing it I keep a record of me doing it um, and I've actually done a little film for you so you can see that as well um, of just some of the exercises that I do and like to a lot of people they probably look really trivial exercises but for me I find them quite difficult quite painful um, but you know that's part of it and that's you know I do try and do them three times a week if I can manage it um, just to see if it, it helps even a little bit. Another aspect of EDS that is probably one of the most visible parts of having ehlers Danlos Syndrome um, are things like mobility aids and not everybody with EDS uses a mobility aid um, there are such varying degrees of EDS so some people can live a relatively normal life whereas others are incredibly poorly um, and it becomes quite life-threatening and then obviously there's everything in between. Um, I personally do use mobility aids. Um, I walk with a stick if I don't have to walk too far. Um, I just find that it helps me balance, it gives me a bit more confidence um, when I'm out. I don't tend to be out on my own but you know rather than having to hold on to somebody or use a wheelchair all the time I do have my stick. Um, which I actually bought from, I think it was from Amazon, it's by a company called Switch Sticks um, and I really love it because it's quite funky. Um, I do also use a wheelchair um, quite a lot when I go to university, um, if I ever go out shopping um, or on days out or anything like that where there's going to be a bit more walking involved, um, I will use a wheelchair. At the moment I have a manual one um, which I had hoped I would be able to use by myself but I've just found that I don't have the strength or the stamina to be able to propel myself for particularly long periods of time, which is a shame because I had hoped that it would give me a bit more independence. Um, but it does, I mean, it means that I can get out to places that I wouldn't otherwise be able to go to. So, you know, <laughs> swings and roundabouts. <laughs> um, but yeah, I am hoping at some point to get an electric wheelchair. Um, and that that might give me a bit more independence to actually go out on my own or with friends and not have to worry about finding someone to push me and yeah it just gets difficult um I do get funny stares sometimes because you know I'll be using my wheelchair and then perhaps I'll get up and walk with my stick for a bit people you know make comments or will stare at you and and you know tut or things like that and I find it quite interesting because sort of I read I think I read somewhere that the majority of wheelchair users aren't confined to a wheelchair they they do use the wheelchair but it doesn't mean that they can't walk there are so many reasons why people use a wheelchair and paralysis is just one of them not just one of them but you know what I mean um, there are so many other reasons why people use a wheelchair and you know people do have these stereotypes of people who use wheelchairs and I don't know, I guess I just hope that by talking about it and, you know, by answering people's questions if I'm out and about, that it will help to break down those stereotypes and to help people understand that, you know, wheelchairs aren't necessarily a negative step, you know. For me, having a wheelchair is a massive positive step because it gives me opportunities to do a lot of things that I wouldn't be able to do without it. So, yeah, it takes a lot to get your head around it, but... I've been using one since I was 15 so 
I kind of feel like I've got my head around it now and you know I do look at it as a positive thing rather than something that's negative. Something you might notice if you know someone with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or any other illness really is that they may have adaptations to their house. Again these are quite visible but obviously not on your person um, but they do they can be very helpful for a lot of people for just getting around the house. So for example we had um, a special step put in at our front door because the front door our front doorstep was quite steep so that makes it a bit easier for me to get into the front of our house. Um, I have um, handrails sort of around my bathroom to help me get in and out of the bath and things like that. Um, I have a bath board which kind of is a board that just goes over the top of the bath so it means it makes it a lot easier for sort of getting in and out of the bath if I can't get in properly I can still sit on the bath board and wash and things like that. Um, I've got friends who've got stair lifts um, which I know can be a massive help especially if someone you know can't do the stairs it is the difference between being confined up you know confined either upstairs or downstairs to being able to use the whole house. Um, there's so many different sort of aids and adaptations and things like that that can be made to the house to just make things a little bit easier um, and again I guess it just you know it's not something that the general public are going to see you, you know if you've got a friend like I said you go around their house you might see that kind of thing but apart from that you know it's not seen and it, it, it is just another part of Ellis Daniels syndrome that is hidden away that people don't necessarily see Something that isn't talked about enough, um, whether it's for EDS or for any other illness really, um, is things it's kind of around going to the loo, I suppose. It's, yeah, it's not talked about enough because people get embarrassed about that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, I try to be quite open about the fact that I use catheters to empty my bladder. Um, I had a permanent catheter for just over a year. Um, and I recently had an operation to see if we could get that one out and I now self catheterize which I'm hoping will last for longer than it did before because that didn't go so well. Um, and again, you know, it's not something that people are going to see um, unless, you know, they know you particularly well. I mean, my family are well aware of it. Um, some of my friends are aware of it um, just because I've spoken to them about it and things like that. But yeah, it is a very private thing. Um, other people have things like ostomy pouches because they aren't able to empty their bowel um, so they have a hole in their stomach and it empties into well not in their stomach it's somewhere in their abdomen um, and it empties into a pouch instead again not something you're necessarily going to see although there is a lot of movement about you know people taking pictures of themselves in bikinis and stuff which I think is fantastic um, but again yeah it's it's something that is very hidden and that's kind of what I'm trying to get across I guess is that you know people talk about Ellis Danlos syndrome as being an in invisible illness and in all matter of fact it isn't invisible it's just incredibly well hidden you get used to hiding things you get used to painting on a smile um, and you know when you see people outside you know you don't you don't generally try and show the fact that you're unwell. There are things that people may see that know you, but generally it is hidden. And unless you know somebody particularly well or ask them or they bring it up, you may never know that they've got an invisible illness. There are symptoms with EDS that can be visible um, depending on their severity. So things like fatigue, I get extremely chronically fatigued. Um, and I guess sometimes perhaps that is visible to people if they see that I'm extremely tired, um, if I fall asleep, um, you know, sometimes I just look awful, um, and, you know, people who know me well can see that and that I'm not feeling very well. Um, symptoms like pain, um, you know, just like, I don't know, take this morning I woke up in a hell of a lot of pain and... I have tried to mask that as much as I can with medications and um, pain relief gels and just sheer bloody mindedness. Um, but, you know, pain is something that can be incredibly invisible but incredibly debilitating. 
um, things like nausea and sickness um, again can be very very hidden um, unless you know you're physically ill in front of people but again a very debilitating um, symptom fainting um, I get a lot of sort of lightheaded and dizziness with my pots um, and again the only time that that would really be seen I suppose is if I fainted in front of people um, or there have been times when I felt very unwell and I've had to sit with my head between my legs and things like that that's when it starts to become visible but there are so many symptoms that you know EDS brings with it and I just I couldn't possibly cover everything in a video that wasn't ridiculously long um, and the kind of things that I've spoken about in this video apply to me this isn't a video that's kind of you know trying to cover everything that every single person with EDS goes through I've, I've based it on what I what I go through and the things that I struggle with so you know please do read more about it and speak to people and you know there's a lot there's going to be a lot of stuff around this month so you know keep your eyes peeled I'll try and like tweet things and stuff like that but that you know it's a very complex illness and there's a lot to it and you know I <laughs> I've had it well I've had it for my whole life but I've un I've only known that I've had it for two years and there's still a hell of a lot that I don't understand about it or that I'm learning about it so you know there is there's always something more to learn um if you'd like to see kind of anything more detailed about kind of any of the things I've talked about I've tried to be quite brief with everything that I've covered um but if there's something that's particularly interested you or that you'd like to ask questions about that you'd like me to do a, a separate video about please do let me know um, in the down bar or send me a message um because I'd be more than happy to do stuff like that I'd like to try and do more things around you know um physical and mental health problems because it's something that's so huge in my life and it, it mean it means a lot to me um so yeah if there's anything you'd like to see more of please do let me know um i really hope that this has helped to just make eds a little bit more visible and to raise awareness about a condition that's quite misunderstood and probably not even that heard of to be honest i hadn't heard of it until we started looking into it so you know the more people that can chat about it and stuff like that hopefully the more people that can be helped and the more people that can understand so i really hope that this has helped to do that and to help you know break the <laughs> mist of it of, of, of what eds is if you've got any questions or comments or anything like that please do leave them in the down bar below i'd be more than happy to talk to you and answer questions and all that kind of stuff um if you found this video useful and you'd like to see more i would really appreciate a thumbs up um and also if you could subscribe to my channel usually it's up there or down there I can't remember um, but it's free and it just means that you get notified about any more videos that I put out um, I would really appreciate that so I think that's probably everything I've probably bored you to death by now but I'm hoping it's been helpful so yeah take care and I will see you soon bye